This is Bill Farmer again. Welcome to McMaster University course, Computer Science 1JC3, Introduction to Computational Thinking. We're going to finish up today with the topic algebraic data types. Now, we gave a number of examples of algebraic data types. And one thing that makes them powerful is they can have parameters. So when we have a when we give a defined algebraic data type with parameters, we're basically defining a family of algebraic data types. So for instance, we had an algebraic data type for lists of integers, but it's even more useful if we have a parameterized list type. So here A could be any type. We have nil and cons as before. Instead of integer, we have a and list of a. And now this algebraic data type defines the type of all lists of, well, defines the type for all values of lists of that value. So this is much, much more useful and general than the algebraic type we had before, which was just list of integer. If we wanted to have list of float, we would need another type list of float. This way we don't need any of those. We just have one list with a parameter. Similarly, we can define a type of bin trees that have values attached to the nodes, and we can let the values be whatever they want. That will be a parameter. So remember before we had bin tree float. This basically is a family of algebraic types and bin tree float is one instance. And the final example is maybe A. Maybe A is an algebraic type where there's two possibilities. Basically, you think of A as being good, you want to use it, or you want to think of, of, of your value as being not good, undefined, something like that. So, for instance, if we had maybe integer, just integer would mean yes, we have an integer. Nothing would mean we don't have an integer, which means it's undefined. It's something similar to for floating point numbers, something like not a number. So this is very useful, and it's the principal way we can deal with partial functions. We can deal with partial functions by defining them using the maybe, the maybe uh, algebraic type. Okay, so here's an example using list and maybe. So I'm going to import the prelude, but I'm going to hide maybe just and nothing because I'm going to define those myself. So I define the list type like this. I define the maybe type like this. Um, and now I'm going to find head. Now remember, head will take a list and normally give back A, but this time we're going to give back maybe A. And it's defined by pattern matching. Let's do this one first. The head of cons x, y is just going to be just x. But the head this I should say, head two of nil is nothing because an empty list does not have a head. So in this case, we're going to return nothing because it's undefined. We're going to return just x in the other cases because it is defined in the value bx. Okay, so that's an example using list and maybe. Um, here's some examples using bin tree. Here's the, the um, algebraic data type defined right here. And I'm going to define a couple, some functions. First is bin tree nodes. That's going to be the number of nodes in a bin tree. And it's defined by pattern matching. And we have two patterns. The first is we have a leaf node, and the second we have a branch node. And it doesn't matter, the reason we have underscores here, it doesn't matter what values are attached to the nodes. So if we have one leaf node, then our tree has just one node. If we have 
a branch node. Then we have the node, which is a branch node. And we also have the nodes that are in the left branch, that's this, and the nodes here in the right branch. And we add those up. So it's the nodes in the left branch, plus the branch node itself, plus the nodes in the right node. So if you think about it a moment, this is a remarkably complex, compact definitions of a comp fairly complicated function. If you're going to define this function without recursion, it would be a real pain to define. But it's completely simple and straightforward using recursion. So similarly, we can define bin tree sum. It's going to be the sum of all the values in the tree if our type is a num value, or num type. So if A is a num type, we're going to take a bin tree of that type, and then we're going to add up the values. And so we have two patterns. We can have a leaf tree and a branch tree. For the leaf tree, we just get x. For the branch tree, we get the sum of the left plus x plus the sum of the right. OK, so now I have a question for you. So here we have another function we want to define bin tree height, the height of a bin tree. So remember, bin trees look, look like this. The height of the bin tree. And it's defined using pattern matching. We have two patterns. Notice that the arguments here are underscores because we don't care what values are attached to the nodes. That doesn't have any effect in the height. And so we have A, B, and C. What should A, B, and C be? So turn off your video, think about it, and then we'll discuss it later. OK, welcome back. This takes a little bit of thinking, because let's say we just had a leaf node. What would the height of that be? Well, it could be 0 or it could be one, depending on what you want to do. Um, in most cases in computing, it would be zero because we usually start counting with zero. It, but it could be one. One is possible too. So, so we have some zeros and ones. So we can't eliminate any, any possibilities here. So A could be zero, one. And then if you think if we're trying to figure out the height of this, it's going to be basically, we'll look at, actually, let me look at it, get a different color. We're going to look at the height of this and the height of these two. And then we're going to add one. Here's the one we're going to add. And then to figure out what we do with these, we take the biggest height of these two. So that's going to be this. So this is going to be 1, and this is going to be maximum. So 1 and max, and that would be 0. So this is the answer. Uh, a leaf tree will have height 0. A branch tree will, its height will be 1 for this top node, the branch node, plus the maximum of the two subtrees. OK, so when we define an algebraic type, we're actually defining a language of expressions. What are, what are the members of the expressions? They're all the things that we can construct using the constructors of the algebraic type. And this language is infinite when the type is recursive. And there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between these expressions and the values of the type. So these expressions, uh, def they denote the values, and every value is denoted by exactly one expression. And we can think of these expressions as literals. They are really literals. They literally tell us 
what the value of the expression is. So for instance, if we take our simple example, if we have, if I have this, that literally tells me that this represents three because it's the successor of the successor of the successor of zero, or you can think of it as zero plus one plus one plus one. Now, if we define functions on any algebraic type, we define, we, it's the most convenient way to do it is define them using pattern matching, and we match on the different forms of the expressions in L. That's the basic idea. This is really summarizes the power of algebraic data types. And let me also remind you, another important part of algebraic data types, every algebraic data type has a structural induction principle that goes with it for proving statements about properties over the type. Okay, so we have one more thing uh, to look at here. This is um, the notion of a new type declaration. So remember we, we had type declarations. So let me just remind you, if we have a type declaration, we have a new name equals an old type. But this is a new type declaration. And we actually create a new type. And the new type is constructed by having a constructor and an old type. And so this constructor is like a wrapper. It's a way of, it's a way of talking about this old type in particular context. So this is a wrapper that goes around the old type. And it's probably um, best to go right down to an example. So we have an integer type here. Sometimes you may want to think about the integer type as a natural number type. In that case, when we do it, when we do that, we want to make sure that if it's a natural number type, we don't accidentally end up with negative numbers in it. So we want to treat, in some cases, integer as a natural number type. So we can create a new type. The new type is nat. It has it, or natural. It has this construction natural integer, and we use this new type, natural, whenever we want to talk about integers that are natural numbers. Similarly, for vector 3, a, whenever we want to think of, of a triple like this, not as just a triple, but as a vector, we could call it a vector 3 type. Same way with the function. Whenever we want to think about this type as a member of, let's say, a function space, we could call it function AB. So the interesting thing about this is that these introduce new types, but these types are only used for type checking. They're only used during the compile time. So at the compile time, they're like new types. But once compilation is done, once we've done all the type checking, then they're, true, then they're used as the old type during runtime. So that means when we're doing uh, type checking, when we're seeing if our code is fit together right, we're going to use natural. But once we know it all fits together right, natural will be treated just like it's integer. Just like it's the integer type. So we get uh, convenience by having these new, a new type natural, but we don't lose efficiency because when we actually compute with it, we use integer. Okay, this completes the algebraic data types topic, and I will like to thank you all for your attention.